Okay, we're going to call our village board meeting for August 15, 2022 to order. Roll call, please. Nyla Fry. Here. Gary Herzberg. Here. Bill Willems. Chris Zellner. Here. Aaron Moran. Here. Joe Zitzelsberger. Here. And Sam Kaufman. Here. Okay, first thing we have is confirmation of open meeting compliance, public postings, official notices, and online availability. I can confirm that the draft agenda was published in the Wanakee Tribune on 8-12. The final agenda was posted in all three official posting locations on 8-12. <laughs> And the final agenda and packet remain available online 812. Thank we you. have two more things, just reminders. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind signing in um, so we can keep better records. And also, if you're making a public comment, there's forms up there. Just feel free to give me the public comment form and we'll address it at that time. Perfect. Thank you. Next item we have is consent agenda. Would anybody like anything pulled? Or I'd look for a motion. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Motion second. by Joe Zitzelberger, second by Sam Kaufman. Any other comments? Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next item is public comment. Is there anybody here who would like to make any public comments for any items that are on off the agenda or anything you'd like to say? Any papers? Anyone out there? You're supposed to at least raise your hand. You are out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. We'll move on then. Presentations, proclamations celebrating our Special Olympics athletes. So do we need to have a motion first? Uh, you can, be great. Move okay. to approve the proclamation. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. And, so. to be, and to be clear, that's a proclamation approving all three in yes. one full swoop. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our first proclamation is for Christian Sylvester. So this is one of the great things about being the village president. Can I touch it? Okay. Proclamation honoring Christian Sylvester. Whereas Christian Sylvester is a Wanaki resident who competed with Team Wisconsin in the 2022 Special Olympics USA Games in Orlando, Florida, and whereas Christian Sylvester dedicated many hours of practice to proudly represent his hometown and stayed at the 2022 Special Olympics Games, and whereas Christian Sylvester's hard work earned Team Wisconsin a gold medal in singles bocce ball, fifth place in doubles bocce ball, and a silver medal in team bocce ball. And whereas Christian Sylvester's dedication, leadership, and enthusiasm have earned him the congratulations of the village of Wanakee and the Wanakee community. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the village board of the village of Wanakee extends its utmost congratulations to Christian Sylvester and hereby commends him for his dedication and outstanding performance at the 2022 Special Olympics USA and wishes him well in his future endeavors. Let, the, let this proclamation be entered into and made part of the permanent records of the village of Wanakee and let a suitable copy be presented to Christian Sylvester. Passed and adopted this 15th day of August, 2022. <laughs> Next, we have Jake Vanderbilt. Yes, give him a round of applause. <laughs> proclamation honoring Jake Vanderbilt. Whereas Jake bon Vanderbilt, am I saying Vanderbilt or Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt. 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 Vanderbilt.
proclamation honoring Garrett Ziegler. Whereas Garrett Ziegler is a Wanakee resident who competed with Team Wisconsin in the 2022 Special Olympics USA Games in Orlando, Florida. And whereas Garrett Ziegler dedicated many hours of practice to proudly present, sorry, proudly represent his hometown and state of and state at the 2022 Special Olympic Games. And whereas Garrett Ziegler's hard work earned Team Wisconsin fourth place in singles bocce ball, fifth place in doubles bocce ball. Fourth. fourth place in singles bocce ball? Um, four, fourth in singles and fourth in doubles. So, we have a correction to be made. We will make that correction. Fourth place in doubles bocce ball and a silver medal in team bocce ball. Is that right? Yes. Okay, great. Whereas Garrett's, Garrett Ziegler's dedication, leadership, and enthusiasm have earned him the congratulations of the village of Wanakee and the Wanakee community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the village board of the village of Wanakee extends its utmost congratulations to Garrett Ziegler and hereby commends him for his dedication and outstanding performance at the 2022 Special Olympics USA and wishes him well in his future endeavors. Let, let this proclamation be entered into and made part of the permanent records of the village of Wanakee and let a suitable copy be presented to Garrett Ziegler. And this one is gonna get presented, but we're gonna get it fixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Three together, <coughs> Roberta. Do you want a picture of all three together? Yeah, that would be really nice. Okay. You can hear those medals clang a little more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I only have one. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a logo well, in the yeah. background. Hey, you want to yeah. Logo in the background. Yeah. Roberta. Yeah, go for it. There's a logo in the background. Yeah. Why don't you do it? Yeah. Hey, there we go. Standing over here. Yeah. Get out of the way. All right. Let's, let's come, come this way, guys. You want them in front of the table or behind? Yep. Yeah. Get closer. Yeah, it's up to Roberta. Well, how do you want the picture? All right, so the short guy's in the middle, so they can see well, that uh, one at time. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> that be so do we all <laughs> just hide away <laughs> <laughs> or what? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and you're all welcome to stay. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Congrats, guys. We're recording it. Yeah, you could. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, All right, next item. I think Todd, Todd just left to get me some water. So, but I don't think he's gonna talk anyways on this. This is yours, Renee. Um, so our first business item is discuss and take action on audit proposal bid. I'll, I'll actually uh, start this one Go off. Go ahead, yeah. Joe. Um, so uh, finance committee met just before this meeting. Um, had a discussion around, well, I can go back a little bit further. Uh, the proposals uh, were ranked um, by uh, Renee, Tim, and myself. Um, after that, we got together, actually opened the, uh, the bid amounts and applied a formula to that as well. Uh, that gave us a, some scoring, um, which you'll note in here. Um, Baker Tilly came out at 91.2 points, uh, Johnson Block at 88.7, Kerber Rose 88.5, um, Clifton Larson Allen 82.5, and Whipley at uh, 79. So uh, we went through all of that scoring. In the finance committee meeting, uh, had a lot of very good discussion about how we got to um, those different ratings. Uh, had a lot of discussion around the financial piece of that as well. And um, ultimately, finance, uh, I don't know what the proper term would be, uh, referred that uh, or approved uh, sending that up to the village board. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay, board members, questions for Joe or Renee? Everybody's got head down, no answer, no questions. Okay, so then I'd look for a motion. I make a motion to approve the Baker Tilly proposal for audit services. Okay, motion by Gary Hertzberg. I'll second. Second by Aaron Moran. Any other comments, questions? Call in favor, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Renee, you're off the hook. Well, how was that? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Very good. Okay. I talked Working enough at the last meeting. <laughs> all right. Um, Second thing, discuss and take action on aquatics referendum, public education, and communications strategy. 
We're actually going to give it to Jared today. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for those who haven't met Jared, and for those maybe watching on TV, Jared Hine is the uh, Deputy Village Administrator and HR Manager here for the Village. So welcome, Jared. How many months has it been now? Uh, four. Four. So four, yep. So. How many does it feel like? <laughs> <laughs> we just said. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, so what we have on the agenda tonight is just to go over basically an outline for our plan that we've come up with at the staff level uh, to go over our, sort of our public outreach and educational informational stage for the aquatics referendum. Uh, because now that we've approved the explanatory statement and the question that will be on the November 8th ballot, uh, we obviously need to now be, begin sort of the heavy lifting part of the, the process here, engaging the public. So we put together a Gantt chart here, a project timeline outlining um, our thoughts here. Um, just want to emphasize this is fluid. This is not set in stone, but this is kind of where we're collectively at right now. Um, the pointer's not working, so you just have to bear with the it. The light on the, there's a switch on the side? Yeah, I turned that on. It's and the red button? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, fortunately, it should be big enough. Let me know if you have any trouble seeing it. So. Um, as you can see here, we, we kind of assign different duties to, to different people, and then collectively what you see is the dark red would be basically the, the entirety of our, our staff team here. Um, so basically the, the basic stuff, keeping the website updated, um, posting things on, on social media at, at certain intervals. Um, it, whenever you see an X, that, that denotes a specific week that we're looking to um, do that particular function for a given reason. So for example, we'd have social media posts immediately preceding things further down the chart, which I'll get to in a minute, particularly like with um, uh, public information meetings and things like that. Um, so uh, the kind of the big thing right now, what we're working on in the early part of this is uh, an information document that would be a comprehensive document. We're thinking about four pages right now uh, that would have all things Aquatic Center in there. So basically, think of it like four pages going over everything we've covered over how many how many board meetings we've had here the last few months going over that um, location project cost scope um, all of that sort of stuff um, well you can also find it on our website uh, under the parks and rec side so in order to do that we're also looking to procure the services of a professional design team uh, to help with that because you know none of us are, are, are marketing people by trade uh, so we want to really hammer that home and have it the most bang for the buck, so to speak. Um, and so with that, then we would also turn to, once we have this information document, getting that out to people, so actually physically mailing that, and then obviously putting it on our website as well. Um, so that's what you see there about direct mail uh, to homes, uh, and then emailing it as well. Uh, we have on here two different things that I want to clarify here as far as information meetings go. So you see here civic organization presentations. It's kind of hard to see on the screen there, but there is an X in that first week of September 12th uh, for that uh, that project item there. Um, that would be like presenting to Rotary, Lions Club, that sort of thing. Uh, not to be confused with what you see right beneath it, which is our public information meeting. So we're looking right now to have two meetings, sort of strike that, that balance between not having too many meetings, but having more than one in case people can't make it. These would be really the meetings where uh, we want the bulk of the public to show up um, and and we go over our presentation they can ask questions really a kind of a town town hall format um, to really serve as that the probably the single most effective vessel uh, for getting that information out beyond social media the website that kind of stuff um, so then going with that we'd supplement uh, with uh, some posters that we would put up around here um, including things like a QR code on there that takes you to the website um, We'd make a video and post that as well um, online to to uh, hopefully you know garner some some views there as well um, a little more creative as well um, and then just sending out regular reminders uh, about the the election there so and Carly you have to forgive me I did refer to it as early voting on October 25th as in-person absentee voting uh, which will begin on October 25th so that's that's kind of the date that we we have that we want to make sure that we're wrapped up with those public information meetings by because obviously with voting starting on the on the 25th um, you want to make sure that you've you've uh, completed your public outreach at that point so um, with that it's just a very basic outline 
I'm um, happy to answer any questions or I would encourage you know the Sue or, or Tim or Todd to kind of fill in any blanks I may have accidentally left here um, but th this is this is where we're at right now um, yeah so happy to answer any questions I will go ahead how many uh, civic groups are there that you plan on attending meetings of was our thought that we would take the list of civic groups that the library um, collects each year, send a notice to all of them, and offer our time and talents. And so the number of meetings we actually attend will depend on who will take us. Okay, thank you. You know, I just uh, I deal with Oktoberfest quite a bit. I'm trying to think of events where we have a lot of residents that, that come for a, you know, a lot of our big events have already gone by, but would it ever make sense to have a, you know, a small booth, and that would be up to the Oktoberfest committee also, but to say, hey, do you have questions about the pool? You know, somebody could staff that booth for, you know, maybe a Saturday and Sunday or Friday and Saturday, and just if people had questions, it would be a place where you could, you know, interact and, and talk with people and get some feedback, and uh, I don't know, just a thought. You get people's true opinions in beer tents. I found that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that one in the paper, probably. Okay. Well, I should stop myself from saying that one. But anyhow, <laughs> Sam, any questions? Nothing specific. I had a similar thinking regarding uh, Walktoberfest with having a booth there, with our nice big easel there for people to see. You know, we talked about that with the park survey uh, at Wadaboom. Obviously, that didn't happen. So this would be a good opportunity to try. What we previously talked about with the park survey okay joe um for the social media posts what services are you looking to target so we we would post on uh facebook instagram twitter um facebook is the, the primary one that's the most heavily utilized sure. followed by twitter and instagram um nothing on i know there's been some presence on linkedin lately i don't know if that would be a we try and focus that on the economic development okay um but it's certainly something we can keep in mind and nobody's going to make any TikToks for this Todd, uh -huh. <laughs> Todd, did you volunteer for that <laughs> of course okay <laughs> all right good Aaron. this looks awesome um i had similar like event idea thinking as people you know, get together more this fall, there's sports starting up, that kind of thing. I also wouldn't want to sign up someone to sit at every event all fall or you know, get yelled at for an hour of people not <laughs> wanting any talk of a pool. So, um, but this looks good. I think, um, I don't know, this idea isn't fully there yet, but like if, people maybe in the community that also want to help support the referendum if they're on board if we could you know if they want flyers to hand out to their neighbors or friends or you know, I think girls swimming is starting up I don't know if they're in support of this but that kind of stuff if almost little like packets they could come and like get material to help spread the word and so one one thing I could add uh, context to the perspective of public groups advocating and supporting the referendum is is, sent, is going to be different than the marketing we're doing our marketing is about educating the public on the choice they're going to make yeah so i want to want to be clear that there there is a, a difference between what yeah. we might be doing and what those groups but i guess i meant people yeah. that maybe are want to make sure they have the relevant info to share not just like you know if people are coming to them other like the leaders that are at these civic organizations versus just like suddenly everything spirals word of mouth like <laughs> I don't know so linking everyone back to like the actual info so thanks Todd one other question if I can yeah, toss it in real quick um, the direct email yep. where, where are you getting the email from the website people who have created accounts okay. um, they they have websites so, it's, so it's not necessarily a guarantee it's it's those who have interacted correct okay. yeah yep. okay yep I think so direct emails would be people that are at Village Center Merrick for some assuming we do use the Village Center um, 
group of people, and we can sort by Wanakee versus other communities, but Jared also has some people through the village website, so anywhere that we can gather emails. But you're right, Joe, that doesn't necessarily um, reach the entire village. It reaches sure. people who have reached out to us you first. Do the best you can, you know. Like ActiveNet, can we pull them from ActiveNet? That's, that's my system, yeah. So I'll say, this is great. A lot of information that's gonna go out to the public, mm -hmm. important. Um, I think, Todd, you said it right, that this isn't a lobbying mechanism. This is an informational mechanism out to the community. Uh, and there's going to be people that are going to be out there that are going to lobby one way or another. And all I ask is those people lobbying to make sure they have all the facts and what they're talking about. And that's what this information is designed for, is to make sure they have all that information. So try not to lobby without knowing the facts. That's generally not a good practice. One so. additional question? Yeah. Uh, you said there uh, you plan on um, getting some professional help with this. Um, where are the funds coming from? And are, you know, do you have the funds for this? Well, it's, I'll say that the funds that we budgeted for a professional helper, uh, Hunsaker, Councilman Hunsaker, uh, they came in under budget. So you had allocated funds for professional support, and we believe that the cost for this graphic design will be within the balance of the funds that you've already approved. Okay, thank you. And putting together a firm budget is right here on this list, too. Okay. <laughs> we may come back, but I mean, let's say, to do the printing cost and the mailing. We might be stepping beyond we don't if know. it's possible, but it's, to get started with that professional support is certainly within an approved amount, but we may be back asking for some quantity to finish up the task with the mailing. Okay, thank you. Has it been uh, considered boosting on uh, Facebook as advertisement some of our heavy hitting social media posts to hit a few more people? Because that could be done fairly inexpensively. Yeah, we're, we are familiar with it. In fact, we're going to be doing it with uh, our Down Maine campaign. Uh, it, we might already have. But um, yeah, you're only talking about a couple hundred dollars to do a pretty decent target, uh, target audience with Facebook. Uh, that should be easy enough to do. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to say thanks to staff. This is a lot of work that we've already put in, and there's a lot of work to, to be done, and thank you for making sure we have the best product we can out there for the community. So I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Was that a debut, or was that... Is that the debut? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good debut. That was a good debut. All right. Now number three. Discuss and take action on release of bike and pedestrian easement within Platte of Arboretum Village. Tim? Sure, I can take that. Uh, thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, in 2020, the Platte of Arboretum Village was uh, approved and recorded. Uh, and it included a bike and ped easement between two lots, lots 51 and 52. Um, the property owners of, the, of those two lots are asking that that easement be released. I think what happened back in 2020 was on paper, this seemed like a good idea, but I don't know how much evaluation of the on-site situation was contemplated, meaning the steep slopes there. And so there are very steep slopes between in that specific location, greater than 10%. I think there's some, some uh, uh, design component in, in the, those pages of the packet, pages 96 through 100, um, that show that, that demonstrate it's almost like an 11% slope in there. So if you wanted to render, render that um, path in compliance with ADA, We'd essentially need more land. However, municipalities can't condemn land for bike and ped paths. So if you want to purchase more land, um, that could be an option. However, given the steep slopes in here, it seems like a, um, a reasonable request that that, that uh, easement be vacated. One other thing I can point out too, um, in front of you is an actual copy of, of a document called an affidavit of notice that was unfortunately Missed in your packet was noted noted as an attachment, but this that's actually the device. If this gets approved, that would get recorded with the register of deeds to um, notify individuals that 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 uh, easement has been properly vacated. So, uh, Seth is, is recommending approval. Questions? I have questions. Go ahead. Um, okay, first of all, is there is there any other possible use for this? Or could it not be used for anything else because of how it was set up? It's pretty narrow, um, but it's specifically called out on the plat for that use. Okay, so it, 
Um, so how will it affect the rest of the bike path? Not at all. Okay. It should, yeah. It, I mean, you mean the path along Hogan? Right. Not at all. Okay. Yep. Okay. It, that it, answers my question. You know, it affects, it affects the ability of someone within that neighborhood to make oh. their way to the path instead of cutting the corner, you're going to have to go up, up right. and across at um, Quinn. Quinn, Quinn Drive. Okay, thank you. Sure. I would just say that, you know, this makes sense to, to release this because of the, the steepness, but these connections sometimes, going forward as we look at parks, I think over the years I've missed a couple of these where I wish I would have had an easement between some houses because you know you have big streets where people can park on yet they have to walk way around to get there if there was a walk through I just want to make sure we remember these as you know useful tools in the future where we can make it work I'll read it exactly what Gary said I was this is a bummer to me because I think the, yeah those little connectors are I mean that's like was like my whole childhood is bumming around the neighborhoods like that and I think they're just so important but I rode my bike over there the other day and I was like, yeah, that seemed, I'm not an engineer, but that seemed kind of aggressive and especially with Hogan being so asleep, I just, you wouldn't want anyone to get hurt by forcing something in here. Um, but I, exactly what Gary said, I think we should try to fit in as many other ways we can and as we look at upcoming neighborhoods and developments. But I'll make a motion to release the 10 foot wide bike and pedestrian easement located across a portion of lots 51 and 52 of the flat of Arboretum Village. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Yeah. Joe? Um, I'm curious about a couple of things. I did go out, drive through that area and took a look, and yeah, it is fairly steep in this area. Is there a reason that we couldn't uh, work with the developer to have that easement be placed between other lots rather than where it's at? Could it be between 53 and 54? Because I know uh, at least 49 through 54 have nothing on them. I don't know their sales state, but... Short answer is yeah, it's, it's a possibility um, that those person or persons would have to either grant that easement and or we'd have to purchase the land for an easement. Um, however, we'd have to obviously, so we don't go through this again, do an evaluation of the slopes in whatever area that you're talking about. Um, but it, it is a possibility. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll just go back in history and say this was going to be our Evil Knievel launch pad, but <laughs> we, we lost it. For those with Evil Knievel, that was a lot of broken bones, so this is a really good choice. Uh, with that, I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Proposed? No. Okay. All right. Next we have discuss and take action on adopting the Dane County Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Scott Russell. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's huge. Off, but in, uh, uh, in the packet, you have the strategy worksheet and the proclamation. Yep. Perfect. So, yep, there's a, a resolution, the strategy worksheet, and the link to the 1500 page one. All right, so um, we decided not to include the entire <laughs> uh, plan because it was about 1500 pages. We thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. So unless you want to read it. But uh, back December 3rd, 4th, whatever you guys' first meeting was, we kind of talked a little bit, and you guys approved the uh, strategy worksheet for the Dane County, sorry, for the Dane County Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Um, that went up to the county. The county did a whole bunch of work, compiled all the municipalities together, and now they need all the municipalities to basically adopt this resolution, adopting the Dane County plan as their own. Um, it's honestly kind of a formality. Uh, a lot of this has to do with grant funding. If there's any grants during the process or during the time frame that this is live, you need this in place to be able to receive any of those grant funds. So if you remember, we kept it very vague so that as we go ahead and have any kind of projects that pop up during this time frame, we can go ahead and, and isolate those and ask for money for those. But that's pretty much all this is. At this point, it's a, a formality. The resolution you see actually came straight from the Dane County Emergency Management Office. Uh, and written up by them. It was given to them by the state and FEMA as far as wording goes. Um, so I guess that's really all we're kind of doing tonight is looking to finish crossing the T's and dotting the I's on this plan. I don't know if anyone has any questions on it. I have a question. Um, on your chart, um, under mitigation strategy goal, highlight 
the applicable strategic category under public education and awareness. Do you have ideas of how that could be, um, how, how your department would utilize that? Here, Scott. No, I see where you're oh, looking. Okay. Um, so what that is, is as, as the emergency management or whomever may end up finding a project out there that needs to be done, we would go through those processes. Okay. Are you, are you kind of understanding? Like, we don't have any projects that are right now, hey, we're looking at X, Y, Z. It's as things pop up, these are the processes okay. that, that we would take. So is there. this for um, individual um, departments or the county? This is for the emergency management end okay. of it. Um, this has nothing to do with, like, individual okay. departments or anything like okay. that. Um, so this is, for those of you who don't know, we have an emergency management plan that covers Wanakee, Westport, Springfield, and Vienna, um, and a conglomerate. And I kind of oversee that just with my unique position and being a part of all those, those communities. Um, but this specifically has to be done by each municipality. So like Westport did theirs, um, and now we're coming to you guys to just finish up yours. Okay, I'm going to make the motion to approve Resolution R22-18, adopting the Dane County Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. I have a second. Second. I have a second from Sam. And I'm just going to say, Jared, you had another chance to get up here. Yours was much more difficult than Scott's, as he said this was just a formality. So well done again. <laughs> okay. No, go ahead. Yet. Um, so <laughs> I, I actually was digging through all 1,479 pages, oh. and I got to page 1231. Um, which, yeah, which happens to be within the Wanakee specific stuff. There's a list of critical facilities there, um, and that list seemed pretty accurate to me until I started looking at some of the other areas, um, and particularly Village of Windsor includes a senior living facility, some child care centers, um, their schools, some of those sorts of things that aren't necessarily owned, managed, or whatever by the village. So I guess my question to you is, was the intent to keep it to just items that the village owns or is this a broader thing where um, potentially we could be looking at um, i don't know spl for hazardous things or you know whatever it might be so our list was actually comprised based off of how it was done back in i think it was like 2016 2015 was the last one they did and that was all municipal owned okay is how ours was set up okay. so when we had that and i forget the gentleman's name who was here at the time um, that helped us with all this. Um, was, it in, was it Adam? No, it was after Adam. Oh, the, the one Gabe? Gabe? Gabe, yes. Um, Gabe went through and updated it just with the municipal owned okay. structures. And I think what we find, Joe, is um, we fortunate for our community is we have a good deal of public facilities that can can suit those needs, those functions when needed. Um, that fair to say? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that this necessarily gets to just that, though. I think it's things that potentially have some risk oh. in our community. Um, and that's that's where when I started to think of, like, again, things like SPL or things like if our, you know, um, if there's damage to our schools or whatever, what sort of impact does that have to us? And I guess the bigger question is, should that be included in here? I mean, it isn't currently. And if it should, is that something that we should be looking to do an amendment or merely kind of note that for the next iteration of this at some point in the future? Um, I, I honestly don't know that answer, but I can reach out to Jay at the county okay. and see what he has to say about it. That'd yep, definitely, and I can get back to you. And for what it's worth, I know when we've run some simulated exercises, the notion of a, of a, a sort of fume release from, from SPL, from the business park, is is, is a typical exercise for oh, us yeah. because of the risk there, mm -hmm. uh, along, that, with the rail, along with the rail corridor. Yeah, being that's, that's what surprised me that it wasn't noted in here. So that was kind of the thought process. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely get back to you. Okay. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second. Any other, anyone else? Call the question all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. Motion second. Made to adjourn and second. Call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.